some of you guys have seen me introducing speakers already, and you know, uh, and Oscar knows because he did it, you had to send us a bit of a bio, and it had some words on it, or maybe one of the team did it for you. And all I did was hit delete when they sent that to me. Good. Because those bios are usually like your LinkedIn profile. And he did this, and then he did that, and he worked for... What I like <laughs> to do is sort of scroll through your social media, your Twitter, and just see if I can pull out a nugget that I think would be interesting for the audience to All just right. warm them up a little differently. Recently or uh, like last month? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, recently? Yeah. Okay, I'm, w I'm curious. And, and, and the best thing is, and you guys know it already because you've seen me, he stood here now going, oh God, what did I say? I know what I said. I, d I just don't know what you picked up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's unlikely in Oscar's case, but quite a few of the people are like, oh, my God, was I drunk? What did I say? Uh, <laughs> no. No, that was yesterday. Hey, you couldn't possibly have known that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what I will say, because actually you're, you're, you're very kind and, and, and generous on social media. You don't say anything too stupid to get you in trouble. <laughs> This is possibly one of the most calm and zen-like Guys, I know. I've, I, I don't think I've seen you break a sweat, let alone get flustered or angry. Um, it's clear that he loves startups. I'm not here to blow your story, but it sort of says it there. So I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Can't hide it. And I think the best thing that I picked up was uh, uh, something you believe about the future that I think not many other people have started believing yet. And I think you're right. So maybe you should so maybe I change yourself to a futurist. <laughs> This is a man who believes that the very next big thing is going to be the future of food. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge campus party, warm, welcoming round of applause for Mr. Oscar Kneppers. Thank you, Nick. We pay Nick a shitload of money to be this kind for all of us at Rockstar. Okay, thank you. It is, um, it's a big honor to be here. I love it. I brought my son, 16 years old. I already lost him. He's somewhere out there, but... This is a great place to be. Um, my name is Oscar Kneppes. I'm the founder of Rockstar. Uh, and I'm sharing with you a story today about what it is that we do, but especially why we do it. What, like, what's the big why of our goal, our mission to build the greatest startup machine ever built by helping startups with anything that they might need in the first thousand days. And then how we do that, and then especially more important, what we learned from that and what you can pick up from that. So we boiled, that, I, I boiled that down in five Rockstar mantras, and I'll send, in, I'll send them to you later if you want them, but it's, uh, it's, it's in a way it's kicking in open doors, but it is great to have lists. We've been around for five years um, recently, and this is what it looked like. This is our new CEO, by the way, Rune, the guy on the left. Um, and the the five years of Rockstar Party was. Were you there, Nick? I was. It was epic, right? It was in and out, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, the briefing was party like a rock star, and we did, and I'm still recovering, and this is two months ago. Anyway, five years of Rockstar, very interesting. I'll tell you about what we did in the last five years, but first, the main thing is what's going on. There's a lot of stuff happening. Half a billion entrepreneurs are working on building a new business, hiring people, and figure out this little thingy that they want to work on and start a little fire, and, and it attracts people. And this magic, this specific magic that you see anywhere where people start new companies, that is attracting many people. More than half a billion entrepreneurs are building companies. And most people ask, why is that happening? And why is this a big thing? Everyone knows startups right now is huge, but five years ago, it wasn't. It was really different. The reason is that everything around us is changing, and if and it's our real, it's it it's de it's our deep deepest belief that if everything starts shifting and changing around you, you have to start moving. And to kind of frame that story, I wrote a manifesto a little over five years ago, and uh, it was meant to be published once, but I've shown it to so many people now. So uh, this is our Rockstar Why. Enjoy it. It's. Three minutes, it's one A4. Let's see if we have audio. Look around you. Everything audio. is changing. La. Companies. Let me start over again. Boom, there we go. Look around you. Yep. Everything is changing. Companies, countries, structures, how people work, it's all in flux. We love it. Here's why. 
We're entering exciting times in an exploding entrepreneurial society. You thought corporations, banks, governments were looking after us? Well, they didn't. You want security? Safety? Stop looking around you. Find it here and now, in yourself. Take charge of your own destiny. This incredible time has made entrepreneurship attractive and more available than ever. It leads to endless opportunities for those ready to grasp it. Go on. Luckily, this change forces us to adopt an adventurous spirit. Embrace change. Love risk. Live with uncertainty. We need to jump into the great unknown. Look for adventure. Seek out our own opportunities. Like the original explorers pioneered their way across seas and continents, we are faced with few compass points. Pioneers choose struggle. We choose a new route as yet uncharted. This is our adventure. We need to be part of it, to drive it, play with it, start it. When do we grow? Failure pushes us forward. Failure forces us to act. We believe in the power of failure. There's nothing wrong with it, so long as it's fully stretched and undeniably complete. What's worse? The feeling that you should have done more. Keep going. Entrepreneurial spirit is focused on you, doing your thing your way. That's why we love startups. All startups. Starting a company makes you a pioneer, a hero in the making. Startups are challengers, innovators, tenacious, risk positive, visionary, driven, strong. We've pioneered our way to where we are today. We're here to give you rock solid support in the first thousand days. We help you grow by pushing you forward. To start and proceed takes courage. It takes guts, madness even. You take a leap of faith and create your space to challenge, make, build, develop, experiment, construct, and thrive. Now that's why we love you. Step forward. Start. So the first two lines of this manifesto are, look around you, everything is changing in the last is step forward start and it's also our first mantra we'll get to that later but the s when i started my first company about 20 years ago the essence of building a company was you lock yourself up in an attic you ride for eight months on a thick business plan you went out to a bank you didn't get money you had to start all over again today it's build measure learn it's step forward start building something learn from it and keep changing it until it works and it is way different step forward start so how do we help? What we do at Rockstar is we'll scout, find founder teams globally from anywhere to help them build companies. So two, a minimum of two, a maximum of three founders. Like the typical triangle is the, the, the let's say the, the magic is the hipster, the hacker, and the hustler, right? The hipster is the designer. The hustler is the, the one that sells it. And the hacker, obviously, the one that builds it, the engineer. That is the, the perfect team, the tripod that you need for a company. Founder team gets in, and they get this, what we call the Rockstar cocktail, with everything included that they need. So people might think, if you ask an entrepreneur, and the younger an entrepreneur is, the more clear and honest they are. If you ask them, so what do you need? They'll probably say, I don't need anything. I just need your money because I know everything. And the thing is, if you start really start asking questions and, and find out what they're doing, they need a lot of knowledge. They need mentorship. They, they sometimes need access to money. But the main thing is this peer-to-peer -peer structure where people are sharing a space, literally, um, in which they can help each other. And this is, this is what they all need, more or less. So how did we use that? We launched the first accelerator on the web mobile field uh, a couple of years ago in 2012. And some people might know, peer, are any people that know Peerbee, like this lending platform? This is Dan Vedapol, he's the founder of Peerbee, and this was his, actually his second accelerator. After that he did Techstars in London as well. But he's the typical example of what a startup is, because a startup is not a company. A startup is a small experiment taking big risks in finding a repeatable business model. 
and he is the clear example. After fi uh, still after four years, he hasn't completely figured out his business model. He has found many ways to raise money with investors. He just did a crowdfunding campaign raising 2.2 million in four days with his own group of users. So there is a, there's a huge loyalty, but this is an ongoing experiment in finding a business model. First Accelerator 2012. We focus on, let's say, everything that we learned from technology, the way to scale, finance, help build tech companies, and put that to work on big issues. So what we learn on the web mobile field, we'll put that to work in energy, in health, and in food. Food, the future of food, that's our next move. We'll be launching that this year, somewhere this year. But it's high pressure, short run, six months of acceleration, funding, mentoring, building teams to help them build companies. We're based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. We're opening up in Singapore and in Bogota uh, in the second half of this year. But the, th the thing is, and we're, all, uh, we're always astonished, but 70% of the companies are not from the Netherlands and not even from Europe. They're from all over the world coming to us. So after building it for five years, we kind of have the reputation to at least know how to, know how to build these companies. Um, many, many open applications. We do some scouting as well. And then there's funneling through mail, Skype calls, meetings. The last 25, we bring them to Amsterdam. And then after two weeks, they start the program. 10 teams, 25 people more or less in general. And then they get into this program this pressure cooker, short run, half a year, with a lot of coaching and mentoring, a little bit of money, this space in th this, like this pressure cooker in time and space to get them to a point that they're investor ready. And that means that in many, many cases, they have to let go of every assumption that they had when they started the company, start all over again, and to give you an impression what it feels like, a little moving. Audio, please. This is probably one of the biggest adventures I've ever been on. It's an emotional roller coaster. Inspiring. something I'm always extremely amazed by is people. People's ability to push themselves to the limit and just uh, accomplish even more than they ever would believe they would be able to do in such a short time. So to give you a little impression on the on the vibe of the Excel. So we launched in 2013 the Rockstar Answers uh, series of events and it's it's a setting like this. So an entrepreneur gets on stage in the morning, breakfast setting, um, and shares who he or she is and what he does and what the business is. But the big thing is they share their, their biggest challenge, the one thing that keeps them awake at night. And the people in the room, people like you, people like us, that know something about something, don't know a lot of stuff about something, they're coaches for the moment. So they'll give feedback, ideas, tips, what to read, who to contact. So the entrepreneur goes home with 200 sometimes new insights on a specific problem that keeps you awake at night. And you know if you're chewing on a problem that is really big in terms of what your business is doing, it is the thing that keeps you awake at night and you know you're in this tunnel and to open that up, that is Rockstar Dance. So we've done that in many European cities right now and since we're moving to Southeast Asia and South America, we're spreading that in the rest of the world. This is Amsterdam Canal House um, in which we now host about 350 people, 70 companies uh, from many, many countries. Um, you're all invited anytime. Just knock on the door and you're welcome to grab a coffee. And it's my guess that you really like it. And then some other thing that we do, a lot of stuff that we learn in building tech-oriented, innovation-driven companies, we try to put that to work in what we call our Karma project. And that is uh, a mixed accelerator that we do in Nepal. So we did it twice in Kathmandu. And it is security companies as well as construction and coffee but we're trying to apply more or less the same principles 
on helping build those companies and it is fascinating to see that it doesn't really matter where your business is, we all speak the same language and that is the strongest point I guess of being an entrepreneur. The essence of what we do is we try to surround people with the best people that we can find to help them go through this process. And that is, you could say this is the software of the company. And the software of the company is just people. It's our mentors. It's, I think we're cutting down on the number of mentors because it's way, way too many and we have so much overlap in terms of expertise. But it's about 350 people that are now helping build those companies. Okay. Being a startup ourselves, we launched some stuff and some worked and some didn't work. So the campus and the academy, we'll save that for later. I don't know, somewhere next year maybe. So this is what worked and these are like the four things that we focused on right now. Acceleration, spaces, impact and answers. Um, that's it. All right. Big question is, especially when we started, if you, you bump into anyone like an old mother in a supermarket and the second question is so what is your business model and I didn't know what my business model was when I started because I just knew I think that if we're able to help people build companies we're adding value and then it's the art of entrepreneurship to find out how to make money with that after five years we made a profit of 4,000 euros so now we know how to do it and it is scalable so finally we found what it is to 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 make a little profit on this uh, and to make it really scalable. So we now reached about, I think it's now 2,300 uh, founders having built companies. And this is what we call our portfolio. So the companies that have been through our process in acceleration, apart from all the founders that we had in our events, it's, well, you might know some of them. And um, fantastic companies, all great. 88 startups from 52 countries creating many new jobs and at this point I guess that they raised about 35 million in follow-on funding. The main thing, the main driver is innovation, technology and scalability. So any company that is in the field that is innovation driven, tech oriented and globally scalable, those are the companies that we can help. And we do that in more countries from the rest of the year on. So okay, interesting. We've been doing that for five years. Why this promo? So interesting to know about Rockstar, but yeah, right. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff that we see every day that we learn from startups and what it takes to build companies. And we see that everything that we learn from startups and witnessing that process is applicable on anything that needs some kind of organization, whether it's a country, a department, a city, a big corporation, the learnings that we get from startups that's the next part of this presentation. The second part is the Rockstar mantras. So I'll step through them step by step, but these are the five Rockstar mantras. All right, step forward, start. I told you, it's like this. It's just commit in public to what you're planning to do and don't get attached to the end result because it will change for sure. It will change a million times before you get successful, but it is the initial step that changes everything. So step forward, start. What does that mean? This is it. This is if, if we have to bring everything that we do back to the essence, it's this slide. We try to get people out of their comfort zones and have them enter this space of what we call abundance. This space of abundance where everything happens seemingly naturally for a reason, exactly the same, the, the, exactly the right way. And this is where the magic happens. But it doesn't feel like that because, well, you know, if you're in your comfort zone, it, it, it's a little less comfortable to be standing here than to be sitting there. But this feeling of if you have to step up and do something else that you're used to, you, you enter this, you're entering this space of where you get itchy and sharp. And this is the type of focus that you need. To give you a good example, this guy on the left is Brian Garrett, a Dutch guy who was working at this 3D printing company, manufacturing high quality 3D printers and they were getting better and better and bigger and bigger every day. And he had a mismatch. He said, this doesn't compute. If we're really working on building something that could change the world in terms of distributed manufacturing globally, why are we building big machines if we can have an Airbnb for 3D printing? Many, many printers of people, the quality of it getting better every day. Let's build this network. So 
he decided at this point, and we, di we didn't know it back then ourselves, that he would quit his job no matter what, whether he got selected during this selection day at Rockstar or not. He decided, I'm going to do it. I'm going to step forward, start, get out of my comfort zone, and we'll see what happens. So he did it. He got selected. We are very happy we could select him. And he, after all, was really happy because a year later, he got $5 million in follow-on funding. Today, this is an old slide. Today, it's over 30,000 connected 3D printers. The company is called 3D Hubs. And it is one of the greatest growing startups that we've witnessed. And they're still in our building. That's the great thing. So they have an office in New York. But this is what happens if you get out of your comfort zone. And today, they boast having more printers and locations than McDonald's has restaurants in the world. Okay. Second one, team up and team up, do it. Because I'm used to start a company on my own. I did it before and it, it's fantastic. And, but it is, it is a lonely, it's a lonely place up there, right? And the good thing is if you have a partner or two, it's great to be covering the whole of the room instead of just one angle. So team up, do it. And then many people ask, hey, why, why, why should I team up? And the short question is, it's way more fun, show it. thinking about the company, like can we do something to make it better or can we, should I, should I be working on it right now? Staying up late, finishing your work and then wake up early again. Many times it's kind of like scaling a mountain but it's all foggy so you don't really know where you're going or when it's going to end. Every now and then you sort of reach like a high patch where you get to see the view of everything you've done so far. As you grow and as your company grows I think that's when you start committing more and more. It is like falling in love in that way. So it's really good to see that they actually help each other with tools, with knowledge, and grow from there. Pitches are uh, are starting uh, to get there, but it's not not nearly uh, what it uh, should be at them today. Um, they know where they need practice, and that's what they should do. Put their hearts in it. There is a room full of people that came out to see you, so you're there for them. Go on stage, have a lot of fun, but make it very clear that you have a great story and a great pitch. And then it will be a great day. Giving up? No. Not a chance. Of course not. No. Never. Never. We're pirates. Rock the stage. I love the quote of the guy saying, giving up? Never. We're pirates. This is, this, is the, this is what you feel. Anyway, you're invited. Come over and see it. Okay, you all know this guy. It is, he's a friend of mine. This guy, right? He invented Twitter and Facebook, LinkedIn. He was the first with an electric car. No, these are the people that always talk but never do. So it's just stop talking, start building. I know it is, it's kicking in an open door. But the thing is, people don't get over their selves and don't, are not able to step over the shadow. Stop talking, start building. And where do you start building? And you, you, many of you know this one. This is the build, measure, learn cycle. And this is the essence. You build, you try it, you fail, you do it again, you measure what happens, you learn from it, you do it all over again. And it is this repetitive cycle of building, measuring, learning. It is simple. Talking about learning. Learning is being able to change the stuff that you're doing. And whether it's, again, if you're running a company or running a country or an army, you learn and then you change. And this word, I didn't know this word when I started the, this company, but the thing to being able to get rid of everything that you've built for the last three years, get rid of it and lose it to pivot. This is a word I learned from the Bible, the, um, the lean startup from Eric Ries, and some of you might know it. The essence of what we do is in this book. And to learn and to pivot, and then to start over, 
That is quite inconvenient. That is getting out of your comfort zone in a big way. And it feels like this. But you need, you need to, and you need to fall back on yourself and to completely start it over again. And that brings us to the last Rockstar Mantra, and it's definitely my favorite. I've seen people do things that they didn't believe they were able to do for a way longer time than themselves thought that they could do it. You think you can't keep up any longer, and you will be dying in a week, and then five months later, along the line, you're still doing it. To keep up and to keep going. That's the essence of what we do. So I'm closing with this little movie of an entrepreneur that really inspired me. He's, he's not the typical entrepreneur, but look at the movie and especially listen to his quotes because what he has to say is really pivotal in the mindset of building a company. Let's give you one quote. I had to learn new stuff. I had to keep going. I had to risk myself. Tony Hawk. Pressure has certainly made me perform better. The only way to get recognized was through competition. A lot of people will reach the top of their ranks and then they just cruise. I had to learn new stuff. I had to keep going. I had to risk myself. That's why I started trying 900s. To me, that was the holy grail. A 900 is a skateboard trick. It's basically a two and a half spin in the air. The X Games came around 1999 and they had a best trick event. 20 minutes on the ramp, do your best trick. While I was doing it, I didn't care if it counted. I didn't care if there were no people there. I was either gonna make that thing or I was gonna get taken out in an ambulance. I think that's what separates the people who succeed and the people who don't. Those who can really do it when it absolutely counts and pull it out when it seems like all odds are against you. I didn't believe I had made it until I saw everyone rushing me. And that's when I realized that it is. It's not competition, it's time-based. You just make it happen, you kind of force it. Sometimes you get hurt, but that's the best way to get hurt. The last quote is the one I love the most. Sometimes you get hurt, and it's the best way to get hurt, believe me. Thank you very much. Wow. I think I love, ah, he's back. Wow, you know the biggest problem with great storytelling? You leave no room for these guys to ask you a few questions. Okay. But that's okay. I'm sure there you are some... You can mail me, oscar at rockstar.com. I, well, I, I was going to say, I'm sure there are some questions. I see Robert's joined us at the back. Thank you for being flexible. Uh, we were going to go oh, yeah. straight from you. You guys know each other, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we hugged last night. I was going to say, he's been, a, he's, been a, <laughs> he's been away for a while, but finally he came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're happy that he's back again. Of right? course, right? Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and, and back and new and enriched and, you know. Um, Enlightened. So, so, well, I yeah, think look at him. <laughs> look at him. Yeah. So we were going to go uh, straight into Antonio, but unfortunately he's got stuck on the train. So we were going to have like back-to-back -back rock start experience from your side and then from the other side. So if you're waiting for Antonio, he's stuck on the train. He's almost here. So what we've done is we've just flipped two speakers around. But Robert, are you in a hurry? Do you mind if we do a couple of questions for, for Oscar? All right. Um, I'm sure there must be questions because when you've got an audience this big, there, there's somebody who's saying, but they're a bit no, shy. It's so it's ladies and gentlemen, perhaps story. you've got a question. It might be personal about Oscar's journey. Maybe it's something about Rockstart. Maybe it's something about your own startup. Who's got a question? <laughs> Hands up, loud and proud. Yeah, it's normal to not have questions. I know. Oh, it's it's like yeah. when we get the first one, there will be a deluge. You know this, right? Hello, sir. What's your name and what's your question? Hello, my name is uh, Paul. And I'm wondering what are the criteria to get uh, selected for uh, Rockstart with your company? Okay. The the one thing is we invest in teams, so we don't do single founder companies, but teams. Two, a minimum of two, a maximum of three, so that kind of is limited. Uh, and the perfect team, like I mentioned, is like the hacker, the hipster, and the hustler. If, if you have those on the team, that works out. The stuff that you're doing needs to either be in one of the verticals that we're in, so food, health, energy, and uh, web and mobile, like the general stuff that lives on your computer or your mobile. And then what we look at, what we can really help with our companies that are innovation driven, tech oriented, and globally scalable. And that's it. So whether you're 18, 88, doesn't really matter as long as you're working on something that we can help build. And then our promise is to help build these companies until they're investor ready. And that's it. And you have to move to one of the locations. So Amsterdam, Nijmegen, and later Singapore or Bogota. You have to be able to get rid of your home for six months. 
and some people bring their families, and it's fantastic. Yeah. I, if I would start a company tomorrow, I would probably pick one of the accelerators globally and move there. Yeah. Great answer. Thanks. Uh, name and question. Yeah, my name is uh, Tim, and uh, I was wondering what is the impact uh, part of uh, Rockstart? Is it also a program, and uh, what yeah. is it doing? The uh, the thing that we do in Nepal and Kathmandu that is Rockstart Impact, uh, and that is like the mixed. It is acceleration. It, it's a little different. It's it's smaller in terms of the size of the, uh, the the budget that we're investing in the companies. It's a mix of construction, coffee, security, IT companies, etc. But we apply the same principles to change to help change the, uh, build these companies. But then it's impact oriented, locally scalable, and still innovation driven. That is the biggest difference. Yeah. So I and we're and we're moving to Bangladesh and, uh, and Myanmar to start doing that in more countries. Yeah. So I, th I think you made a, a, a slight distinction there that, that's for me quite clear, but maybe for the audience. Rockstart here in Amsterdam and, and, and the rest of the world is about going big, right? It's about going global. It's about having that ambition yeah. Yeah. with the impact. It's about changing your local environment, changing your local economy. And of course, if yes. that can then go global, so much the better. Yeah. But it, yeah. it's, it's right yeah. more one-to-one -one impact, right? Yeah, Closer exactly. to home. Yeah. Another question, perhaps. Ah, it's always the other end of the audience. That's okay. It keeps me fit. <laughs> Means I earned last night's beers. Uh, who was it? Yeah, hi. Hi, my name is Peter. Um, I was wondering, since you're so globally oriented, um, you have, of course, really national differences also in the, the region where you're located. Do you see that um, those um, differences in, nation, in, in nations is also reflected by different resources that you provide to all the startups? I'm not sure if I understand the question. You mean the well, because the, the it's because like uh, 30 the nationalities. No, no, but because I mean, like you have some institutional differences. For example, um, in America, the institutions are way different, like yeah. arranged as here in the Netherlands. Do you see any differences in the resources? I don't know. I, I, I had lunch this week with our new managing directors in Singapore, both in Bogota, and they are trying to get their head around how to relay the story wh without damaging the brand and the methodology. But there might be a slight difference in the approach on how to finance or how to connect mentors. For instance, what we found out is what is very common in the Netherlands is that uh, specialists like Nick and Robert spend time on helping others. And that is a common thing. What we found out in Asia, the first question of mentors is, so, so what am I getting paid? And we said, well, it, this is like a pay it forward culture. No, I'm not interested. And it, this is a real difference. So we're trying to find out what is the sweet spot on making this work in other regions, but we, we don't know yet. But what we do know is that if whether they're from Asia, Africa, uh, the US, Europe, when they are in the program, they, it all works out. Yeah. All right, Oscar, I know you, uh, you came in and you said you brought your son with you this morning. Yeah. I don't know if you know, there's, a, you? there's a, behind you. Right. <laughs> there's a, a bit of a tradition here at Campus Party. I don't know if you've seen it, but in the hall next door, you see all the, the like VR gear and all the tech stuff. And in yeah. the hall next to that, there is, I think, about 2,000 tents. That the, yeah, no, yeah, 1,200 yeah, tents. 12 I, I made a picture this morning. I wish I knew because I would have slept there. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? So <laughs> we have this with most of our speakers. When they find out afterwards, they're like, wow, that would have been cool. Yeah, I yeah. would love to have, have stayed the night. So that is a tent, right? What we're actually going to do is give you one of our campus party tents for you Thanks to take man. home. Thanks. and. Uh, Take that experience Thank with you, you or put it up in the Rockstar office as a, as a memento. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a campus party. Round of applause for Mr. Oscar Knippers.